If we were to look back over the past decade, it would seem as though whenever there is a new hyped up series of graphics cards, that there will always be a slight shortage, or at least minor problems facing the release. But now, quite a while after the release of the 30 series of Nvidia cards, there is a problem, and that is you still can't really find any. An important factor in this whole scenario to understand is that there is a definite contrast between a natural increase in sales, which would require an upscaled manufacturing sector, and an artificial increase in sales, or an inflated market, which is most likely what the current scenario, or at least some of it, could be labelled as. So what is driving this unnaturally fast increase in consumption? There's actually a few reasons. Beginning about a year ago, when everything began to shut down, it was noticed that there was a demand increase in gaming hardware over the whole market. A demand increase of about 50%, which is huge. The new PlayStation, Xbox and the Switch quickly sold out, and thus many turned to the world of PC gaming, although this sector was already seeing massive growth. Over the ocean, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company which up until this point was a relatively unknown name for those outside of the tech sector, began to emerge in news articles. The TSMC is responsible for, unsurprisingly, the manufacturing of semiconductors. AMD in particular uses this facility to produce practically all of their semiconductors. Leading to the Christmas holidays at the end of 2020, AMD began to prioritize console hardware to keep up with expected overselling that would occur. After all, they were bound by contract to prioritize it. This was a major stumbling point for AMD. Similar to the problems Intel was facing in the CPU world, wafer shortages severely limited manufacturing ability. This is also driven by the fact that practically all of the major products AMD are pushing all require the same seven nanometer wafers rolling off the same lines. The obvious way to counter this is to simply upscale manufacturing or downscale die size or both. However, the roadmap for it doesn't pin a finalized upscaling date until sometime in 2023. But that's not the only problem when it comes to material shortages. Another huge factor which is often overlooked is the problematic supply chain of GDDR6 memory. Most AIBs, such as MSI, will bulk purchase both processing units and memory modules at the same time. This has a huge value impact in the long run, as larger bulk often means cheaper individual units. However, with material shortages in the world of memory module production, shortages mean that MSI, EVGA and others are less likely to purchase in bulk due to possible under-delivery of GDDR6 and over-delivery of processing units. Or to summarize, they don't purchase one without the other. Couple this with several other shortages, such as basic substrate material and silicon production limitations which can be seen everywhere. The bigger picture on the manufacturing side of things seems to be that the whole tech industry is seeing a supply shortage problem take center stage. With scalpers taking advantage of this, yet another problem began to emerge at the end of 2020, and that was the popularity spike yet again in proof-of-work tokens, among other things. The media quickly jumped on this, blaming the graphics card shortage, price hikes, and the rest of humanity's problems on crypto. Mining builds saw a massive increase as Ethereum rallied up, being slightly easier to utilize. Mining Ether, among other work-based tokens, became the craze for some, and continues to hold strong as of writing this. The actual scale of this in relation to the graphics card shortage isn't clear, although in 2017 we had the same problem, and also, as very few may remember, in 2013 with Litecoin. Regardless, the ease of accessibility for mining tokens such as Ethereum allow regular graphics cards to be used. Nvidia, as many may be aware, have taken a stance against this, trying several times to discourage this practice by implementing hash rate limiters 
and introducing minor inconveniences which have to be bypassed properly to utilise their cards. But as it stands, this wasn't the whole reason. Although this had an impact on the market, this wasn't what was causing the shortage. In fact, it had very little to do with it. There is also a problem that is too complex to solve with a simple upscaling of infrastructure, and that is distribution. This is far more important than solving the problems with crypto and scalpers. The more components you integrate, the more you have to source. This means more supply lines that could be cut, shipping, air freight, and interstate transport doesn't come cheap or easy, particularly in our current geopolitical scenario. Pair that with the fact that all your competitors are trying to do the same thing and eventually things can go wrong. The United States, China spike in hostility over the past year has had knock on effects around the globe. As a result, international shipping is significantly more expensive and less efficient. A decrease in commercial flights have also had a massive impact. To add to this is another interesting phenomenon. Over the past year, online shipping has increased massively, obviously. It was already on this trajectory, but given the current state of things, this was massively accelerated. Businesses in Asia sell goods to the United States, and the goods are shipped over. In the past, these ships would arrive and then wait at ports in the United States to fill back up with American goods that needed to be sent back to Asia. But there's a problem. The ships are filled up with priority shipping, despite sometimes not even being filled to capacity. The end result is a lagging amount of export, a shortage in available shipping, and thus an even higher spike in price related to all of this. The constituents surrounding this issue are seemingly endless. This has knock-on effects on almost everything to do with international transport. Not to mention the various trade tariffs both the United States and China have been throwing at each other and you have a bit of a disaster. This is likely if you were to take the time to do the research. The primary problem in this whole mess. Manufacturing underperformance is common, but shipping restrictions means everything from core materials to initial shipments of products takes longer and costs more. Only three companies still manufacture chips. This is due to increased advancement of manufacturing procedures and massively increased costs. Billions of dollars are poured into manufacturing facilities which only last a few years during a technology cycle and then have to be overhauled. This means that to turn over a profit, chips have to be manufactured at an incredible speed and even a slight problem in the production chain can cause the annual turnover to be in the negative. This is what people don't understand about this industry. This isn't a highly profitable industry if there's any problems. You lose money very quickly. On top of this huge initial investment is quality. Over the decades, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company has become the choice manufacturer of logic chips purely because of the level of quality that they always provided. Having realized this, Intel plans to outsource its production to TSMC in the future, cutting down the number of large-scale chip manufacturers to only two, Samsung and TSMC, with Samsung still many years away from matching TSMC's capabilities. China's $1.4 trillion injection to accelerate the internal tech industry aims to free them from this international supply chain giving them complete independence. Chief among the chip industry giants in China to receive the funding is SMIC, who, despite lagging far behind the international players, hopes to become a domestic solution to TSMC. The primary issue here for China is that chip manufacturing is harder than it seems, far harder. The originally proposed solution to the advancement gap was to throw more money more manpower and more resources at its chips foundries. This didn't work, in fact it was quite catastrophic for their entire industry. What they needed more than anything was the know-how to create an efficient, high quality ecosystem. Since then we've seen several thousand of Taiwan's best minds leave to work at SMIC and other startups across China which the CCP is constantly pushing for and funding. This has led to an increase in IP theft, lawsuits, 
and stolen ideas being reverse engineered, to name a few. This problem is quite large and in the coming years will probably play out in a more dramatic and be more sensationalized across the media. At the moment, it's fairly low key for anyone not involved in the tech industry. This is a whole problem in and of itself and if you were to do the research, you'd be able to find out just how intertwined a lot of China's semiconductor manufacturing problems are in relation to Taiwan and the current geopolitical scenario the United States finds itself in with China and Taiwan. Regardless, the full scale of this problem is hard to grasp. And hence, the graphics card shortage highlighted the fact that our current supply chain problems are just the tip of the iceberg. With everything from smartphones to cars to aircraft relying on this technology, there isn't really any easy solution. Chief among these problems on a larger scale is a weak point in defense. For example, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter relies on components which are in large part built overseas, including in Taiwan. The obvious issue here being that a slight fault, let alone a full severing of the supply chain of these components from Taiwan, could have catastrophic effects on America, among many other countries, and their ability to defend themselves. What we are witnessing is the beginning of a technological cold war. In fact, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say that this cold war started when the Soviet Union collapsed. So where is this all heading? If all goes well on the small scale, then AMD and hopefully Nvidia soon thereafter will be able to upscale their manufacturing by 2023. And by this period, also switch to smaller die, allowing more chips to be built from each wafer produced which may eventually ease supply shortages. What this has highlighted is just how delicate the production pipeline is, with more and more niche components. Everything from cars to smart TVs are becoming reliant on supply chains, which can be cut off or work flooded at a moment's notice. But on the broader scale, the TSMC has become the center of an industry. In many ways, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the heart of tech, which as it stands is still years off from proper alternatives should anything happen to it. An invasion by China would prove catastrophic for the world of tech as everything would be cut off and this would have knock-on effects on the rest of the world. With more and more tech developers turning to TSMC as the only viable solution for logic chips, the back orders, which ironically keep TSMC and its massive manufacturing expenses out of trouble, could also be a catastrophe waiting to happen. A positive feedback loop has, in some sense, come into fruition as a result of this reliance on an increasingly small number of capable providers for a service which, due to technological advancements, is becoming increasingly difficult and expensive. The only way forward is to make sure that these supply chains are kept safe and that alternatives exist should they be needed for manufacturing. Hence, the United States, among others, is attempting to upscale their chip manufacturing capabilities domestically in order to stand on their own should any problems occur. This is perhaps the only logical way forward, since the future is hazy. Nevertheless, the graphics card shortage problem has highlighted, to some extent, the major problems we, in Western nations, are facing. And these problems will only become more evident as time goes on.